Welcome everyone to our session, Modernizing Oregon Metro's uh, Digital Landscape. Uh, we're really excited to be here today to talk with all of you about the, how we collaborated with the Oregon Metro team to develop their digital ecosystem. Uh, and this wasn't a case of needing to just develop a single site, but really need to develop a centralized platform to manage five key uh, government and venue websites and to do it in a way that was efficient, built on top of a modern Drupal stack, and delivers highly accessible, multilingual, and user-centered websites that serve the greater Portland area and build trust with the public. If I can get my remote to work here. Uh, but a little bit of background on us before we dive in. My name is Brian, and I'm the VP of Engineering at Forum One. And up here today with me, I have three uh, exceptional and key members of the project team. Uh, we have Olu, our technical architect, on the project, KJ, who is a principal engineer at Forum One and was our lead front-end developer on the project, and then Ben, our senior solutions architect. We're apparently going to go without the remote. <clears throat> now, in, in case you're not familiar with Forum One, uh, I did want to give a little bit of background there. So we are a digital agency that works to amplify the impact of mission-driven organizations through product development, strategy, design, uh, data, and emerging technology. Our work primarily focuses on nonprofit associations, foundations, cultural institutions, and of course, government agencies. Uh, and we partner with these organizations to understand their challenges uh, and implement effective solutions that have a positive impact on the world. And this is why Oregon Metro, commonly known as Metro, uh, is the perfect client partnership for us and why we've been working with them to develop their digital ecosystem since 2020. So for those of you not familiar with Metro, they are the regional government for the greater Portland area, uh, and they're really unique in that they're the only directly elected uh, regional government in the country. Uh, Metro does important work, including uh, land use planning, overseeing uh, facilities such as the Oregon uh, Zoo, which we'll be talking about the work we did for that website uh, quite a bit here today, uh, as well as managing other government and community buildings such as the one we're all currently in, the uh, Oregon Convention Center. So uh, even if you are not a Portland resident this week, you are all experiencing some of the great work that this team does. Today, the, the plan is we'll, we'll be discussing a little bit how we work together with Metro to build their digital platform, uh, how we built a starter kit across uh, their ecosystem of websites, how Forum One and Metro uh, really leaned into collaboration and worked in a, a, an integrated fashion where we really brought our teams together uh, that really led to a, a highly successful engagement. And we'll dive into how we approach creating a, a highly accessible experience on top of it. And of course, we'll save some time for, for questions at the end. So uh, get those ready as that pops up. But with that, I am going to kick it over to Ben, who's going to provide some more background and details on the work. OK, that's how that's working. Um, OK, so imagine you're part of an HOA community. Um, you and your neighbors all have different household budgets. Um, priorities for your homes. Um, you also share community features um, and enjoy amenities that you all contribute and vote for. Um, some members of the community may be able to put in their own backyard pool. Some may find their budget eaten up by dues and only get to enjoy community features that they've been able to advocate and vote for. Um, so that's essentially where the Oregon Metro web ecosystem found themselves um, when we started working with them. Um, they had a collection of sites um, for programs, um, a small web team to do maintenance, and an ambition to be able to offer more for their programs and sites. Um, they wanted to create a shared profile for all the sites um, with a distribution standardizing what could be standardized um, and customizable on a per site basis as needed. Um, the Metro team knew where they wanted to be. There we go. Um, the Metro team knew where they wanted to be, but they also knew they didn't have the in-house expertise um, to get there. Um, D7 end of life was coming. Um, a lot of their team's time was taken up with maintenance. And they hadn't been able to get the kind of experience with D8 at the time that would have let them be confident in how to build what they knew they wanted. Um, they needed a partner, uh, which is where we started to get involved. Um, Metro put out an RFP at the end of 2019 describing how they needed um, a vendor to help them build an approach to managing multiple sites. More importantly though, they had a really clear vision for how they wanted to work with the partner. Um, and looking back, I'm struck by how much those ideas still define the work and that we've had and the successes we've had with them. 
Um, they wanted someone to focus on long-term partnership, um, agile workflows, collaborative model, um, making sure there was a fully embedded Metro staff on the projects, team transparency, and a really strong focus on inclusivity and accessibility. Um, in early 2020, before COVID derailed the funding and timelines, we had a great collaborative working session with everyone here in Portland, which is where that HOA metaphor came in. Um, the Metro web team had done a ton of work behind the scenes leading up to this project to socialize the idea of a platform, but to make that work, um, every venue really needed to be bought into that idea. Um, they were gonna have to make contribute budget. They were also gonna have to make sacrifices as features were rolled out and delays. Um, the outcome would be worth it, but we really need to make sure everybody was involved. Um, so using that metaphor really let us abstract the idea of contributing towards this communal, communal good um, with all different debt budgets um, but, and to get everyone involved. Um, and it worked. Everyone has stayed invested so far. So um, COVID and boom, um, funding slowed down the vision for the timeline for how this was gonna happen. Um, but it meant that for the next few years, the Metro web team was able to build out the start of their platform on their own. Um, with us acting in sort of an advisory tech leadership role to help them think through that architecture. Um, but because of that clear vision for collaboration and embedding their team to learn, this was a success and we were able to lay the groundwork that we would use to build the zoo's website. Um, so a few lessons that I think we learned from this is like having a clear vision of how you want to work um, and what you want to get out of it, not just the deliverables, is invaluable. Um, taking the time to crystallize that vision and get that buy-in, um, the HOA metaphor and the that buy-in have let us stay on track through a lot of delays at this point. Um, and being realistic about budget and resource constraints. Um, these are as important to any project as the technical constraints. Um, so it's here where we brought in Olu to lead the build project, um, where the platform makes sense as a starting point for a real site, um, with those goals of embedding the Metro team and ours collaboratively work, um, and would we be able to achieve some of these ambitious accessibility goals. As Ben mentioned, I was brought into the project team to help build the first site to use the platform and distribution, the Zoo site. And KG and Ben, amongst others, had already had quite a bit of experience collaborating with Metro. Not too soon after I onboarded and met the Metro team, our project manager shared the contents of an email with us from a Metro team member. We had been referring to their team as Oregon Metro, and that team member wanted to make sure we understood their preference to be called simply Metro. The Form 1 team thought that was great. <laughs> we made an effort to do that. It may seem like a small thing, but that kind of transparency helped build trust between our organizations as we embarked on building Oregon Zoo site. So Metro's team at that point comprised two developers managing five web properties, including Oregon Zoo's Drupal 7 site, all without a project manager. Even with the platform and distribution, KJ and Ben had already helped them build. Managing all that is no small feat. Metro and, and the Oregon Zoo would rely on us to re rebuild their Drupal 7 site and Drupal 9, freeing their developers to mostly focus on maintaining their existing websites. I say mostly because after we followed a lot of our standard practices in the first phase of the new site build, which was which includes discovery, finalizing designs, and agreeing on product requirements. I was then asked to also consider whether or not to integrate uh, their two developers in our build team. Now, based on my prior experiences working with external project teams, I will admit to having been scared at the prospect of <laughs> integrating our teams on this build. Often, there are different workflows that could lead to slow communication and could also risk misunderstandings. There can be competing goals that get in the way of progress, like getting bogged down in implementation details uh, versus allowing uh, space for iteration. Also, if there's tension between the two teams, sorting out those differences becomes more challenging when you are navigating multiple uh, organizational charts. But the opportunities were too great to ignore. If things went well, we could build the site faster, strengthen our relationship with Metro, increase opportunities for learning between both teams, 
and have a better website distribution and platform. We got our teams on the same page by first sharing both those concerns and opportunities, along with the simplified chart laying out roles and responsibilities. It went over well. It certainly helped that we had continuity with KJ previously, helping them develop the tools we were now gonna use to build the Azu site. Metro's team was already using some of those same tools for communication and project management. There was experience and trust there. We made sure to bring the, them into our overall build workflow, including participation in regular stand-ups and sprint reviews. Metro's team was also given access to other development tools that they didn't previously utilize, namely our continuous integration, continuous delivery platform. I think we had a successful journey together building the Orgazoo website. Having direct access to their team of developers meant that there was an increased understanding with their team. Their developers could better communicate the technical approaches internally to Metro, making client demos and reviews smoother and making it easier to get approvals. Also, it helped make handover to their developers at the end easier. Another example of how having direct access benefited Form 1's team was it made onboarding our developers a lot easier. We didn't have to have multiple exchanges over email or calls uh, to get access to their repository. Looking at the process from a high level again, there was a closed feedback loop by which we could communicate directly about bugs we found with the distri distribution or the platform. These bugs could then be addressed quickly without too much explanation. This not only helped the Zoo website, but it will help us build new sites uh, moving forward. One specific example where we found this clo closed feedback loop useful is when we begin to implement the language switcher. All of Metro's sites will have some multilingual component out of the box. However, we found that the language switcher caused a white screen on certain pages of the Zoo site. We traced the issue to a module included in custom distribution, and then our team was able to resolve the issue and contribute back to the distribution so we don't run into that in the future. We had the best of both worlds. <laughs> they had our expertise in our project team with many years of developing with Drupal. We can lean on their institutional knowledge to refine features which would ultimately give the Oregon Zoo a better product. One place that stood out more than anything was accessibility. And I'll let KJ uh, walk you through how accessibility was successful for us on this project. A key requirement for Forum Metro, for Forum One and Metro, uh, was to build a site that could really be used by everyone. As Ben mentioned, that was part of the original RFP, and it continued all the way through the project uh, to launch. When a stakeholder showed a screenshot with us, showed a screenshot with us that he had been circulating internally, showing that there were zero accessibility issues on the homepage because that was one of the things he wanted to celebrate. And having that clear vision uh, was really important because it meant we were able to make trade-offs when we needed to because we all were aligned on what was most important. Having that level of buy-in from everyone was critical because accessibility isn't something that development can just kind of do on their own or even design and development can do on their own. It really takes everyone who's involved in the project. So with that vision, uh, we kept accessibility at the forefront throughout the development process. Uh, so as we built out UI components um, in Storybook, we used the Ally add-on to be able to very quickly check for accessibility issues. So for things like insufficient color contrast or incorrect ARIA attributes. Our QA team also uh, tested each component as we built it, doing uh, both automated testing and manually uh, checking the keyboard navigate uh, checking that it could be navigated by keyboard. Um, but the expertise wasn't just on the Forum One side. Uh, Metro also had a lot of in-house knowledge um, and did their own accessibility testing with real users, uh, many of whom navigated the site uh, using JAWS. And so that mix of automated and manual testing, I think really worked out well because doing the automated testing throughout let us catch a lot of issues very early on in the project. But manual testing allowed us to catch and fix issues uh, that automated testing could not. 
Uh, so for one example, one of the testers on the Metro side caught that when they listened to the main menu being read with their screen reader, uh, it said visit button. But since that button uh, was supposed to open up the main menu, what they expected to hear was something more like visit button collapsed. So we had the text alternative that satisfied the automated testing, but doing that additional manual testing uh, let us catch that we didn't have the right text alternative. And so having like the expertise on both sides brought together and that collaborative relationship, I think, really meant that we could identify and fix more issues than either team would have been able to do separately. Um, and this was another area where having that blended dev team that Olu talked about made for a better end product. Uh, so for example, the Zeus site uses some third-party widgets that neither Olu nor I had much experience with. Uh, but the Metro devs did because they had worked with them on the Drupal 7 site. So they already had some uh, internal knowledge base, including, most critically, what needed to be done to make those widgets accessible. Uh, so they were really able to, <laughs> they were really able to take on that work um, and make those third party integrations as accessible as they could be. Uh, so overall, uh, what got us to a point where I just checked last week and there were still zero accessibility issues on the homepage um, was first and foremost that through line of Metro's vision and accessibility not being an add-on that like we'll do at the end if we have time, but a key part of that vision. Um, and then doing that mix of automated and manual testing, uh, which was possible because we had the close collaboration of everyone for both teams involved. And then all of that was made easier uh, by the starter profile and theme that was built for Metro because it was built by Metro and Forum One. So Ben's gonna talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, so from the beginning of the project, um, we had a vision for, uh, there we go. Um, for a standardized set of features and modules that would be implemented to leverage efficiencies um, and facilitate maintenance going forward um, by Metro's team. Um, <clears throat> Metro needed a cost-effective way as well to build out at least five sites. Um, and following consistent approaches when possible is going to make maintenance less of a headache um, and let those sites be spun up more quickly. Um, they were also standard and shared features that every site would need, um, whether that's the language switcher that we were talking about, there's a large shared footer that's gonna be the same across all the sites. Um, and as the sites were built, then the web team would also be able to backport um, new features into this platform that would then open them up to the next sites that were built. Um, this would all be built into a Drupal distribution and accompanying theme built in Storybook. Um, Metro sites are of various complexity, um, but the main Metro site is easily the most complex. So in COVID derailed plans to start building a site um, from the beginning, we agreed with, to use the robust features that we knew the Metro site um, would need as inspiration and to support the Metro team as they built out the initial distribution and theme. Um, logically, these robust features would serve as the broadest base and could then be used by every site and increase the amount of overlap. So they needed less unique functionality as they were built. Um, I'll pass it over to KJ to talk about how that actually went. Yeah. So the Zoo site was the first site that we actually used the starter kit on. So obviously as we were developing it, there was like a demo site, but the Zoo site was the first one with like real content and other stakeholders uh, that we actually had to build start to finish. And so we learned a lot along the way. Um, one challenge that we ran into um, that was that the zoo ended up having different content needs. So when we were building the starter kit, we were really thinking about the Metro site in a lot of cases because it seemed sensible, like build the most complex for the most complex case and then you've got all the features that you need uh, for other sites. Uh, but when we actually got down to work on some of the zoo site components, um, in some cases it seemed like it was almost as easy to create a component from scratch as it was to have to strip out all the parts we didn't need. Uh, so that was a learning. Um, what I found uh, as we got going was that the starter kit was at its most helpful when we had small composable components to start from. So like buttons is a good example. Buttons just needed some, some theming to you know, get the, the color palette and the branding for the zoo site. 
but we weren't having to start from scratch and think like, okay, well, you know, does it have a hover state? Does it have a focus state? The fully designed and functional components uh, were not quite as helpful as I had hoped, um, but one exception there is elements that have the same requirements across sites. Uh, so the top of the site has a, a banner that marks it as part of Metro. Um, the, the, the purpose of the banner is to be the same across all sites to provide that continuity. Um, so that obviously makes perfect sense to include in the starter kit. Um, likewise, the language switcher. So the language switcher might look a little bit different from site to site, you know, because we want it to, to be themed properly. But overall, like having the site be multilingual um, and how the language switcher works is not drastically going to change. Um, so that's another case where um, we would want to keep that in the starter kit. Uh, what we did, uh, did learn, though, is that for those cases where we know, you know, we absolutely are going to use this component from the starter kit, uh, we do need to make sure that everyone, stakeholders, developers, designers, anyone who's involved in the site understands the constraints because what we definitely don't want to do is design a language switcher from scratch as if we have a blank canvas and then try to retrofit it into a component that already exists. And Olu ran into some similar challenges on the back end uh, that he'll talk about. So another place where we found challenges uh, with the approach KJ just touched upon where we were solving for the most complex website but trying to resolve it within the simplest was with configuration management. The custom distribution we based the zoo site on includes a common set of features that would be shared between the various sites. The features included a few custom modules but it mostly is managed with configuration. We had several modules implemented in the profile to help manage the distribution. This includes configuration synchronizer, configuration merge, split, distro, snapshot. At the time of development, there were 2,100 plus uh, configuration files contributing to the profile. I think developers with experience with enterprise level websites wouldn't blink twice at that number. And the advantages of starting with a profile are that we have reasonable de defaults to start with and you save a lot of time going over configuration that you would otherwise just take for granted. Nonetheless, considering the relatively small size of the site, coupled with the complexity of the implementation of configuration management, it was overwhelming to figure out what we did and did not need. Now, I, I wish I could turn around and tell you that I came up with some brilliant solution to sift through all the configuration changes. Uh, to get to the minimum required to start the Oregon site, but as it stands, as it stood, I, I waited through about 400 changes to get to that starting point. Having time since launch to consider how we might have improved workflow for another project like this, I would consider moving to a starter configuration approach. Instead of keeping all of the configurations globally within the profile, I would bundle the configuration into smaller starter kit modules in some respects, <laughs> this seems quite quaint now <laughs> that we've uh, seen the Dries note and know where Drupal is headed with um, the distribution recipe initiative. But you know, let's say you want an alert system. Even if there's no custom code uh, required for this feature on your website, you can have a module just containing the configuration for any related contrib modules, fields, views, or blocks that are necessary to implement it. After installing the profile and enabling the module, you can then commit the configuration globally for your site, uninstall the module, and then you have an alert system ready to go. The advantages of a recipe or starter module approach coupled with good documentation make it much easier to understand what features, what each feature does and whether it fulfills your site's requirements. Speaking of documentation, this is one of the things that worked well with the platform and distribution we started with. This is also something that we value about our partnership with the Metro team. They have a strong culture of documenting their work. So when we started the project, besides all the various readmes in each repository, they had a helpful wiki on how to use the platform. Again, because our teams were well integrated, we were able to contribute back and enhance the documentation. And I'll pass it again to KJ to talk about further successes. So 
the documentation was one part of the developer experience, which uh, overall uh, was really great on the front end side. And I feel like that's definitely where the starter kit shone and saved us time. So the structure of the starter kit on the front end side is uh, there was a base theme, and then each site would have its own child theme that extended the base theme. And then the Metro devs also set up a skeleton repo to uh, quickly scaffold a child, that child theme. Uh, we borrowed a lot from Four Kitchen's Emulsify design system, um, including their command line tool, and Forum One starter theme gesso. Uh, so one, uh, one of the features that was part of that, uh, that scaffolding was using a YAML file to manage design tokens that are then converted into a SAS map as well as CSS variables. Um, because the, the Metro devs wanted to make sure that they were looking forward to the future and thinking about like not just what the site need now, but for instance, might it need a dark theme later on. Um, and the nice thing about having uh, this YAML file to manage the design tokens is for each site, it lets you do some initial theming uh, very quickly just by changing out the token. So swapping out things uh, like link colors, text colors, and font family and sizes. You can start to apply the branding uh, doing uh, very minimal coding. And then one of the, the main benefits of the, uh, of the starter kit was having all of the development and build tools ready to go. So a lot of times when you start a new site, the first step is almost to build all the things you need in order to build the theme. Um, in this case, uh, that was already set up. So we had Webpack configuration. Uh, we had uh, useful SAS utilities and mix-ins that could be shared between sites. Um, we had, I mentioned Storybook when talking about accessibility. Uh, we had the HTML version of Storybook set up as well as uh, tooling around Storybook. So like Twig.js to be able to take uh, Drupal Twig templates and turn them into something that Storybook can read. Um, and going back again to that, that vision of inclusivity, um, we also had uh, multilingual stories set up. So essentially knowing that um, the experience of non-English speakers was an important part to, of Metro's vision. Um, each site out of the box uh, would have a story that would show what the fonts look like, not just with English characters, but with like Vietnamese characters or simplified Chinese. Um, again, sort of building from the assumption that of course the site is going to be available in more than one language. Um, and likewise, uh, that, those base components were already you know, vetted for accessibility, and the ally add-on uh, that I mentioned, it was also included in that starter kit. So again, ensuring that the foundation of each site is one that is accessible and inclusive. So this saved um, a bunch of startup time, um, but it also has the advantage of uh, over time, it means that e all the sites in the Metro universe, you know, once they're all built on this starter kit, will use the same development approach. Um, so going back to, you know, our original, the original challenge Metro has, if they've got a fairly small uh, development team who has to maintain all these different sites, um, so being able to use similar tooling means you don't have, you know, one site that's being built with Gulp and one site that's being built with Webpack. Um, and then the, the thing about having the starter kit, you know, maintained in-house um, is that enhancements don't have to just flow in one direction. So Olu talked about the example on the back end with sort of uh, fixing something at the starter kit level with the modules. Uh, there was some of that on the front end as well. So something can be fixed uh, in the base theme and then the uh, various sites updated or a component that's built for one site that actually seems pretty useful uh, can be backported into the starter kit. Um, and so that way, uh, the idea is the starter kit isn't just like a, a single fixed starting point, but a living repository of uh, like Metro's best practices for development. So as I mentioned, the zoo site was the first one built with a starter kit. Um, and we, we, learned, we learned lessons along the way, but overall, uh, we built a site that I'm really proud of, and I think everyone involved in the project is really proud of. Um, and so you know, Brian's going to wrap up and share some of those lessons that we learned. Thanks, KJ. So the challenge that Metro came to us with was helping them wrangle a, a number of disparate websites uh, and, and solve the problem through a creation of a central web platform. And to do that in an integrated way of working, 
creating a solution that, that drove efficiency and consistency. Uh, and like I said before, it was highly accessible, multilingual, and most importantly, uh, built trust uh, and served the public. Uh, in other words, the task they came to us with was to, to work with them to build a great product for the benefit of Greater Portland. And we may be a bit biased here, but we feel like we've empowered the Metro team uh, to do just that. Our most uh, recent work with them, as KJ just mentioned, the launch of the, the new Oregon Zoo website has been a, a huge success and is the first step uh, in aligning Metro's digital ecosystem uh, to the starter kit and the uh, centralized uh, platform. Now, delivering this work is never easy. Uh, as the, uh, the group here has, has talked about, there are certainly challenges uh, along the way and things to work through and, and figure out um, as we touched on today. But we believe that other organizations, be they nonprofits or government agencies, can do the same type of thing. Uh, you can deliver great products to your users. You can deliver great experiences to your users and uh, meet deadlines and, and budgets along the way, even as challenges pop up if you're able to work together. And so, like Katie said, I hope uh, the takeaways from today can be a, a good example and a model for how others can do uh, the same type of thing. So uh, if you're looking to build an accessible website, um, accessibility and inclusivity need to be uh, considered foundational elements of the work. And truly creating accessible experiences uh, takes a collective effort across all teams and, and not just something that can be pushed off to development or that just designers and developers um, are responsible for, but everyone has to be bought into that concept from the start. When developing a starter kit, uh, emphasize and lean into iteration. So uh, things won't be perfect from the start, as we discussed, uh, but it's important really to, to foster an environment of feedback, create those feedback loops uh, for the starter kit throughout the project lifecycle. Uh, and most importantly, the combination of uh, in-house organizational expertise and agency expertise uh, can be a game changer, but only if um, those feedback loops are created, trust is built, um, and the two teams are really allowed to be highly collaborative and work towards a, a common mission and goal. And of course, it, it always helps to have done this type of work uh, before. So uh, to be able to lean into to obviously valuable learned lessons and expertise and experience with only, that only comes with the, the repetition of doing these things multiple times. So if, if Forum 1 uh, seems like a good fit as that partner for you and your team, uh, we'd love to chat afterwards, or you can uh, reach us at forum1.com or the info you see on your screen. Uh, and if you'd like to learn more about our work with uh, Metro and, and the um, starter kit and what we've discussed here today, Ben, as of this morning, has posted a write-up with more details, so uh, be sure to check that out on the blog as well. Uh, but with that, we're happy to take any questions you might have for the team. So I'd be happy to, but that was actually all handled on the Metro side. Do you want to? Go for it, yeah. Um, we have several, several of the, the people They're from Metro here. are here. <laughs> um, and I was trying not to put them on the spot, but since they volunteered. <laughs> um, who's the person who asked the question? Oh, hi. Um, my name is Caleb Tucker Raymond. I'm a web developer with Metro. Um, we, how did that happen? Uh, <laughs> as, a, as an agency, we work with, um, we want to be, I'm, I'm talking here. Uh, it's, you know, government services are for everyone, right? So we already had an existing contract with a firm that did accessibility testing. And we worked with them to identify some people that would be potential web users and we got whoever we could get, and they did focus groups. Um, and they did live accessibility testing. I believe um, we created two or three tasks for them to do, so like not a whole lot. One was probably buy tickets. Do you remember? Something like that. I'm looking at my people. We're all we're, you know, we're doing this. Um, and then those were recorded. So uh, we were able to get the feedback, and I think we created like 50 or 60 accessibility issues just out of their feedback. And then uh, us as developers were able to actually watch um, the feedback and really understand where it was coming from. So it's, it's pretty cool. That's a great yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of those sites that are all going to use the same uh, distribution, um, which one is next and what are you most nervous about? <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
Um, so it's either going to be Metro or the Expo site, which is going to be interesting because those are like very different. They're going to be very different challenges. Metro is a huge site with a ton of content. Um, there's going to be a bunch of migration that's going to have to come out of that. I think that's certainly something I get nervous about is anytime we're talking, we're going to have to migrate content. It's like, okay, that's going to take forever and it's not going to go well. Um, so planning for that up front. And then the Expo site, I think, is going to be really interesting because it's like a much smaller site. Um, so thinking about like what is that ultimately that very pared down, like it's probably going to be pared down even from what we did for the zoo. Um, but can we really use some of the work that we did to build this like really quickly? Like I think Expo would love for this to be a really efficient project. Um, they're one of the ones with less budget to dedicate to their website. So if we can use that, if we can use the platform to quickly get that spun up, then that would be amazing. So <clears throat> yeah, I'm excited. Well, first we talk to them about budget. Oh. <laughs> but then if they, if they decide it's important enough to be funded, then I'll let. Yeah, so I, that definitely happened on the zoo site. And I expect, I expect anyway, that it will happen on, on every site. Um, and that's part of why we have like that, that child theme set up with the separate repo, or the, yeah. Um, and expect some sort of custom work on each site is exactly that. Um, so that we have in the starter kit kind of those things that are more shared and then each site can have its set of uh, custom components. And then if one of those custom component turns out to be less custom than we thought but actually needed by other sites, it could potentially be backported into the starter kit. To hop in on that, um, another sort of example specific uh, to the zoo site was uh, the zoo hours. Um, that was a custom element uh, that we built uh, on top of whatever we had for the distribution platform. I don't imagine that all of Metro sites uh, are as concerned about hours or timing as the zoo site uh, is, but um, you know. It was it felt like there was enough room to do that one thing uh, because we had you know everything else uh, ready to go and spun up um, yeah Uh, no, we're not, we organized along the principles of atomic design, but we were not using a specific atomic design tool. Um, we did use uh, part of Emulsify, right? The, the BEM, uh, a tool to uh, make it easy to create uh, BEM, so block element modifier classes. That's the CSS naming structure we followed. Um, and then as far as other tooling around Storybook, um, there may have been some other add-ons there, but none that I'm remembering that are design specific. And I'm seeing shaking heads from uh, the Metro team. So I think, we're, that, I think that's all of them there. Right, right, and that's, uh, that goes back to why um, having buy-in on all levels is so important, because exactly, right, like I, I can't, there's only so much you can do on the development side or to make something accessible. Um, it has to be part of the design, it has to be part of the content, um, and since we were all aligned, like we did, uh, had that alignment up front, we were following that same vision. Um, as far as knowing that accessibility was important, then it just be then it became a discussion of like, okay, well, you know, this won't be accessible for you know this reason or, or this particular you know use case. 
Um, so what are some alternatives we can consider? Because we sort of all knew, I feel like, that just let it be not accessible was not on the table. Yeah, I think, I think that buy-in piece was really a big part of it. Um, so I think like even if you go past like accessibility, like some features may be used by three or four sites, in which case it may make sense to build them into the platform. But we still needed to get in investment. Like that fifth, that fifth site would still have to contribute to that development piece. Um, so and I think that's also been like the Metro team, like web team, has done a really good job of sort of building that sense of like they can apply standards, and then everybody has to work within those standards. Um, Oh, <laughs> Kirsten did it, okay. <laughs> Having the design system documented was part of that, but yeah, and then Krista being a good firm stakeholder. And the zoo had gone through a, their, their branding is new and very nice. And I think it, it came with a lot of like good supporting materials. Yes. Go to the zoo site if you haven't, it's very cool. I heard something about a design token. Did you do any automation, say Figma design token with um, that module that you guys had I, or starter kit? Right, so uh, that's the dream, but no, we did not automate the Figma to YAML file process. Uh, we did have uh, scripts in place to automate the YAML file to SAS map, CSS variables, and I think there are J JavaScript variables as well. Any last question? Cool. Well, if there are no more questions, thank you, everybody.